I always knew I wanted to be an attorney. I just like helping people. Are you okay? Do you need any help? Thanks, Christopher. I've been in Vegas helping the little guys since I was a little guy. Are we any good at helping you win? No, we're great. Call us now for help with your injury case. The other person could have it to a mark or a scratch. Hey, this is David Coleman. Welcome to The Problem Solver. Every single week, we have amazing people coming on, experts talking about problems, how we can solve the problems. Uh, today, we have... Great co-host, Danny Miner again. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Dave. Beja Rivera, thanks again. Hey, thanks, you guys. So I have great co-hosts as usual every single week. And then we have today Ryan Helmick, who is an attorney with the defense firm. Thanks, Ryan, for joining us. Thank you for having me. So it's always great, once in a blue moon, to bring on a criminal defense attorney, which is kind of rare. The goal is to get some information to the public because I don't think there's any type of major opportunity where people see or hear a criminal defense attorney unless something happens to them or a loved one, which is very, very rare. Right. So the goal is to bring you on and talk about some interesting topics. One of the big topics I find is what is pre-file representation in regards to if someone, um, cops at their door, um, trying to investigate them or they're knocking on the door in general, what should you be doing in general and what is pre-file representation from a criminal defense attorney like yourself? Okay, so what I'll do is I'll break down what pre-file means. And when you say pre-file, I'm just gonna just, you know, Clarify that just a little bit further. Pre-file of criminal charges, okay? Pre-file of a criminal complaint. That means you have not been charged with a crime yet. The case is being investigated, and therefore you are a, and you are a suspect, okay? And so when that happens, um, it's very important to get uh, a lawyer involved as soon as possible because the lawyer is able to call um, the detective on your behalf, right? Uh, so sometimes what happens is, and I'll just tell you the, the, the process, right? Um, the detective may call the individual who is a suspect. Um, they may knock on their door and leave their card, right? And so they typically will have a way to get a hold of them. And typically the detective is going to say, hey, you know, I just want to talk to you, right? Come on down and talk to you, you know, about whatever. Uh, they probably won't even tell you what the case is. I just want just to talk like to you. Swage you in. Right. And so when they come and see an attorney, the objective for me is number one is to call the detective and find out what role is this individual that you're talking to? What role do you have him as? Is he is he a suspect or do you simply have him as a witness? Right? Because if he's a witness, uh, and every time I've had this conversation with a detective, uh, they've never flipped and said, well, Ryan, yeah, he was a witness, but now he's a suspect and now we're going to arrest him. You know, most detectives that I've dealt with, um, well, everyone that I've dealt with in that situation has been forthcoming, okay? And so if they're a suspect, uh, the conversation changes. Now I'm fishing for answers, I'm fishing for what's going on. Um, you know, what, what do you need from us, okay? What are you investigating, right? Uh, what do you think... Uh, happened here, right? Some detectives will give you more information than others. Some will say, look, you know, Ryan, uh, you know, I can only give you this, this, and this, right? And some will just say, you know, here's what's going on, and they'll kind of break it down, uh, the facts into more detail, all right? And they always typically say at the end, you know, we just want to talk to them, bring them down, we want to talk to them. And, and uh, very rarely ever uh, do I do that with a client. Okay, unless it's some extenuating this goes circumstances. goes into the whole Miranda rights parts as well, right? You guys. Well, I mean, when you get to, when you get to that part where the person comes down to the station, you know, and starts to talk whether they're free to leave or whether they're arrested, okay. and we get into the they, Miranda. They should rights. have already been explained that. Yeah. Okay. okay. And so, uh, with the pre-file, the objective is really simple. 
you're trying to get the case nipped in the bud before charges are you, you want to prevent charges from being filed you want to be able to not be charged with a crime right so if you can do that then you've accomplished uh, your objective right and i'll give you an example um casino marker cases right uh, where somebody is gambling and they have overextended themselves by getting credit with the casinos, okay? And so if they fail to pay back those casinos, then they will be charged with felonies, okay? Depending on you know, what the amount is and so forth, but all the ones I've had have been felonies. And so they, they well, let me backtrack. When they come to me, they will say before they're charged that, hey, this casino is coming a after me, right, uh, in regard to this money. And so I'll reach out to the division of the DA's office that handles that, and what we will try to do is prevent charges from being uh, filed if we can do what the, DA, what the DA's office is asking us to do. Okay, so that's an example of... of being in defense for your client, well, right? Just like, or, or having your clients right. back. But in, yeah, and so that's one example. But in regard to just pre-file representation in general, it's important because of another reason, right? The cop might have probable cause to arrest you and, and or the cop might submit the documents for an arrest warrant, okay? And so you want to know what direction the cop's going to go because if they have PC, probable cause to arrest you, then they can just go bust down. And, I mean, they can do all these things. They can arrest you wherever, at your work, at your house, and uh, all these different things, right? Um, and so if, if you find out from the cop that they do plan on doing that, then what you say to your client is they look, let's handle this on our terms and our way and control the case. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so you say, let's have them meet at our office. Rather than not have any control whatsoever. Exactly. Have a meet at the office the de to call the detectives. The detectives are always cool with this. Right. Yeah, Ryan, I'll, I'll be at the office. They'll be there. Take them into custody, take them to jail. It looks good in front of the judge that they voluntary, voluntarily surrender themselves. The other alternative that the detective can use is they can uh, simply file the paperwork with the, I mean, when I say paperwork, the police report and the investigation with the DA's office. The DA's office can uh, decide whether they want to issue an arrest warrant or not. And uh, what I also say to the detectives, hey, you know, can you let me know when an arrest warrant is issued? So uh, likewise, I can have him come to the office, and we can turn him, we can you can turn him in, and then we'll have a hearing the following day. So you're always behind the scenes for your client, no matter what. Yeah, absolutely. At the uh, end of the day, yeah, you're and behind the scenes. You're working. You're working that. Different angles, whatever angle the case so many calls different, for. Yeah, case by case. Uh, yeah, and every every case is different. Correct. And so, with an arrest warrant, again, they'll just come and arrest you wherever. Right. Right. That sucks. And so, <laughs> you know, most detectives that I've dealt with um, have been pretty cool about that uh, and telling me that some don't. So the bottom line is, you know, what, the, what I say, survive the justice system by having a criminal defense attorney like yourself. You know, there's nothing wrong with it. You're not. It doesn't mean that you're guilty. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't be like ashamed to, to have an attorney if someone's making an allegation. If there's a cop at, the, at your door, like it's and not you're an unsure. admissible, like right. Yeah. So the bottom is, you, if you need representation, you should reach out to an attorney like yourself. Mm -hmm. If you if you need some help, or if you're unsure, then they can reach out and contact you. Yeah, if you think you're being investigated, then then you've got to contact a lawyer uh, as soon as possible. You, mm -hmm. you, I mean, okay. that's the smartest thing to do. It doesn't make you guilty, mm -hmm. okay? You're protecting your rights, and that's why the, we have the Constitution. The Miranda rights, correct. That's awesome information. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. I always knew I wanted to be an attorney. I just like helping people. Are you okay? Do you need any help? Thanks, Christopher. I've been in Vegas helping the little guy since I was a little guy. Are we any good at helping you win? No, we're great. Call us now for help with your injury case. Hey, this is David Kohlmeyer. Welcome back to The Problem Solver. Again, we have Ryan Helmick, the defense firm here today, talking about some great topics about criminal defense and uh, educating the public in regards to, God forbid, you need an attorney. 
the police are investigating or knocking on your door. So mm-hmm. one of the big, big topics these days, a lot of people have been messaging us in regards to uh, marijuana, right? It's a big thing right now because it's legal and driving under the influence of marijuana. Um, Go ahead. Ryan, the biggest thing I think, if you're looking at our state, it's huge in our state because marijuana is illegal. Arizona, it's legal. California, it's legal, right? And I think you're going to end up having a Supreme Court case sooner or later on this marijuana deal because marijuana stays in your system for 90 days, at approximately 90 days. So let's say, I'm going to give you an example. I take a gummy two nights from now. You know, I had my fun. I had my high. My right. high is over. It's two days right. later. I go down the road. Cop pulls me over, okay? And uh, he feels I'm under the influence for whatever reason, takes me in, and now there's marijuana in my system two days later. What... What do you think is going to happen with that? How could they tell if you're high at that point? What's the point? What's it like when they give you a breath test right away, they're telling you you're under the influence of alcohol. But marijuana, they don't have a breath test yet for this marijuana. Mm-hmm. What's going to happen with that? Well, I mean, you're, you're right. This is probably the most complicated issue right Right now, right? With all these states, Colorado, I right. think it's legal in Washington, all the right? All, all these legal. states where it's legal, right? So there is no breathalyzer right now that i know of there might be right right i know when i researched this they uh, are working on one and have one um that they are testing in california okay to uh blow into it and see if this person uh would i have active marijuana in their system to right to show if they're driving well high right? right just like you know your blood alcohol level so you know, I get this question a lot, though. Also, like, you know, hey, marijuana is legal. What do you mean? I can't, I can't drive on it. It's, it's legal. Then right. I say, well, so is alcohol. Right. Okay. So, um, but to go back to your question, uh, in Nevada, the legal limit is two nanograms per milliliter. Many, there's a lot of people that will say that's too low. Some people, I've never heard anybody say it's too high, but uh, some people will say it's too low. That's the active marijuana. Okay. So okay. that is physiologically. Um, and pairing you just like uh, a blood alcohol level. Right. I feel like of a anything certain... that alters your state of mind. Yeah. Period. So that's active. So some scientists will say three, five hours and in between that range, right? Right. And then there's the inactive, and that's going to depend on the, 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 um, whether the person is a chronic smoker right. or not. Tolerance. How often? It's tolerance. Yeah. That's a good word. Tolerance. Right. Yeah. And so that can stay in your system for, like you said, I mean, 30, 60, 90 days. I, I don't know. I just know it can stay in there for a long right. time, and it depends on each person. But the legal limit for that in Nevada is five, and, and it doesn't make any sense, and they are trying to get this off the books, and right. I highly doubt that even somebody would be charged with a DUI now, right. nowadays, if they had inactive in their system, because what it means, just just what it means, it's inactive. Right. You are not high. Right. It's okay? just in your it is, system. It's in your system. Okay. It is not physiologically doing anything to you. Okay? Right. Okay. And here's the thing, Ryan. I think you're gonna. This is gonna come to a head. Wow. Okay. When somebody's gonna be driving and they get in a bad car accident and somebody is killed, mm-hmm. God forbid. And now they test them. They take them back. They give them the blood test, and there's marijuana in their system. Right. Well, that's I the mean, Supreme Court. It, that's something. Exactly. Yeah. That's going to be that. I believe that's going to come to a head. And then we're going to figure out what we're going to do with marijuana. Because, you know, <clears throat> it's going to really be tough to prove. that it hasn't happened. Well, that we that. know of. It might have happened in a different state. Yeah. I don't know if it happened out here. You're right. And I, I, I mean, I was thinking of that when you were, yeah. when you were talking and, and when I was talking about that, too. Because I'm like, if when I was saying that they, they don't charge anybody, I was saying to myself, well, Let's pretend somebody who's a chronic smoker had all this inactive marijuana in their system and, and they just happened to... Bad accident. You have an accident, somebody died, right. right? And so where is the line drawn? Because we know I scientifically agree. that you, the person is not impaired. You can, right. You're high one day, you can, you can, like a, you can go run an Ironman, company. you can do a marathon, you can do all these things. You're not impaired. Okay, right. so yeah, that that would be something that I would think that would have to, you know, would be big enough for the Supreme Court or something, you know, a, a higher court that need would need to address this, to because if a lawyer appeals that to say my client was not impaired, right? right? My, my client is not impaired. How are you going to charge him? How are you going to convict this person 
out here is two to 20 years. How are you going to convict this person to prison when he wasn't impaired? Right. Right. So that needs to go to a higher level if indeed that happened. Right. So somebody can make a ruling on this and say, no, you know, the person's not impaired physiologically. Then, then why are we Charge. charging these people? I agree. And hey, um, again, I, I don't know if you've like watched our previous podcast, but like I love to say, like I'm from the streets, like I get like <laughs> word from the street. Right. Um, every time something like tragic happens it's never somebody that's under the influence of marijuana like it's it's a, well alcohol to me alcohol is the worst drug. is the worst i mean I, i'm if just they, being a cop they say marijuana right? is like a gay drug and i feel like alcohol is like definitely number one yes and then it just like kind of just uh it's like the snowball effect after being, a, that. being a cop beja and, and i'm sure the, the attorney probably has the same thing 99% of the cases we go on through a Friday and Saturday night are going to be alcohol related. Most of your clients, right. they did so, something like around alcohol. Marijuana, probably never. Because okay. people just want to eat snacks and laugh. Right? Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So right. having an attorney in front of me uh -huh. and, then, and then two retired police officers, how many times has it been marijuana related? For real, for real. Well, here's a good question. I never right, had right, one. So right now in this state, do you, are you having more DUIs with alcohol, or are you having it with or marijuana? Or DWIs. Oh, Isn't that what they call it, DWIs? No, it's DUI out here. <laughs> uh, of course, uh, still more, more with alcohol, the majority, but also more often uh, than not now with marijuana. Yeah. So um... So the, the bottom line is this, is that the DUI in regards to marijuana and alcohol, I mean, are both are problems in this state. I guess the last question I can really have in regards to this topic is, there's a lot more deaths that are taking place. I mean, every day you see DUI, DUI, DUI. Things are definitely getting more violent from driving around the town. What's your take on that? Like, what would be the reason why you think that things are, I mean, I think there's a lot more rest, there's a lot more death and substantial bodily harm. Some NFL players too. What's yeah. your take on Big that? Like, cases. Why, do you, why do you feel this increase? I mean, some people would say well, there's I more mean, people that live in Vegas. Right. Well, that's what I was going to say. Population. I mean, the population increases. It only makes logical sense that the crime would increase as well. Right. Um, so, I mean, to answer your question, I don't know why uh, other than, you know, that reason. There's Uber, there's Lyft, there's all of these things, mm -hmm. right? And still, you know, still the, the, People don't the UIs are, are, but you, are high. But you would think with all these marijuana locations that are opening up now, there would be more DUI with marijuana than there would be with alcohol. But it doesn't seem that way because right. it seems like it's always alcohol. But anyway... It's definitely a problem, you know, we, we try on the, on the show here to help solve problems, and we, we came up once one time, which we're actually sending a letter to rideshare companies that we believe there should be a category when you, when you want to get a car, it should come with another person that would drive your car home as well. Well, that would be great. Awesome. Because that's what most people think of. Yes. Like, I don't want to leave my car here. Exactly. Like, you know and what? that's why uh, you came to the problem solver, okay? <laughs> because Dave always comes up with No, it's solutions. a great... I mean, why... Just think about it. I mean, even no. if it's 30, 40 bucks more, I would do that because most of the times you sell yourself thinking, hey, I can drive. I'm not intoxicated. I don't want to leave my car here because then I have to come back, you know, tomorrow. So mm -hmm. one of the things we're doing is sending a letter to different rideshare companies and, and, and kind of making that request to them in general. So, but anyway, this is a great topic and... Um, I appreciate the insight uh, from you sharing in general. We hope that people are not going to be driving under the influence of alcohol and marijuana so we can prevent deaths and accidents from taking place in Vegas. So we'll be back in a quick minute. We'll talk about another great topic. Injured? Call 602 Hurt. Car accident? Call 602 Hurt. Pacific West Injury Law, a firm that focuses on you. Our firm is dedicated to you and your recovery. No fee until we win. Millions recovered. Here when you need us. Hey, it's David Colmeyer. Welcome back to The Problem Solver. We're here with Ryan Helmick with the defense firm talking about some great topics and, and educating a lot of people about DUI marijuana, pre-file representation, the cops at your door, what to do. One of the last topics I wanted to bring up is a, a hard topic is if you have a loved one that gets arrested, God forbid that happens to a family member or you're incarcerated, you're in jail, you're in prison, and you need to get out. How do you get someone? How does someone get out of jail, Brian? Well, okay. So there's a couple of different um, ways a family member or a friend can handle this. All right. So right now, uh, the courts are open seven days a week, which is uh, great because before they'd have to wait the whole weekend. If they got arrested on Friday, they have to wait till Monday. So, I mean, here's the thing it depends on what the offense is. Some defenses, like DUIs, for example, if it's your first one, 
and you ha- and you have uh, no other record, right? You're you're, you're going to be released. Okay, I'll say you're likely going to be released. Oh, like to say, oh, Ward, after 12 hours or 14 hours or whatever, uh, they're likely going to let you go. Okay, uh, domestic violence battery, first offense, likewise, you know, probably the same. Okay, uh, so when you get into some of the other offenses. Um, the person has two choices, all right? Because bail is going to be set at the time that they're arrested with this, whatever the standard bail is for that particular charge. So the, pers- the, the, the person should go to a lawyer first because that lawyer will be able to show up at the court day the following morning and argue to get that bail reduced or argue to get that person out in an effort to, number one, of course, get them out, but number two, save the family the money that they would have to pay a bail bondsman um, if, if, rather than just jump the gun and pay the bail bondsman when they could have potentially saved money, okay? So, listen, you know, we, we use bail bondsmen many times, and, and I'm not saying that you're going to get everybody uh, OR'd, right? And when I say we, I say, you know, my clients use bail bondsmen all, all the time. Uh, and so you get the bail reduced, and you get them over to a bail bondsman, Right? And uh, that should be the approach, to hire the lawyer first to see, most of the time it's possible, to get the bail reduced or to get him out for free mm-hmm. and then address the bail bondsman if you need to. Okay? Uh, I know what, what, what happens is a lot of people, and this is totally normal, um, you know, panic or uh, uh, are scared, right? All normal things, okay? to feel when a loved one or a friend is arrested. And they want to get them out of there right now, and the person who's arrested wants to get out of there right now, right? And so, yeah, they can go right down to a bail bondsman. Let's say they get arrested at 3 p.m., right? They, and they go down to a bail bondsman. They can get them out, uh, you know, probably the next day they'll be out, right? Um, so I just, I saw a case that came, uh, and I talked to uh, where the bail was um, $80,000, right? And it was a case where I looked at it, I said, shoot, I probably could have got this down much lower than that, right? And the person ended up paying, you know, the percentage uh, needed to get that person out of bail, which in that person... Or, that or pers- the person or the family member. The family member, mm-hmm. which was $12,000, right? Oof. I mean, but uh, listen, this is, this is um, uh, you can't blame them for doing it, okay? Mm-hmm. Because they're just trying to get their family out. And a lot of people don't know the process. Mm-hmm. And so hopefully by me saying this, it'll educate some people in regard to that. Um, but, you know, maybe I could have re- got it reduced to 40. Still send them to a bail bondsman, but got it reduced, right? If they would have just went to a lawyer first. And then also now you put yourself in a situation by spending $12,000 that you're at, you don't have money to hire a lawyer now, okay? Because a lot of people You've spent will not have the money to do both. Mm-hmm. And the lawyer, not being biased because I'm a lawyer, you're going to need a lawyer to represent you through the case, okay? Uh, and so it, it is better to have the lawyer, okay, first, and then have that lawyer try to get the individual out um, second. Okay. And I, do I feel like all of those things can be avoided most if of they the just time. contact an attorney. So this, I feel, today our podcast is what we're talking about, contact an attorney. You guys are going to be the ones that are going to guide them step through step through step, whatever's going to be financially uh, reasonable or or Mm -hmm. beneficial for them and just whatever works better in their favor. Right. And there's no bright, yeah, correct. There's no bright line rule here when there are exceptions to this, okay? So, uh, you know, every every case is different. Mm -hmm. Um, But as a general practice... Um, I feel that that is uh, the best approach. Right? I, I got one question, be a real quick one, because I know we're running out of time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I heard attorneys say, and you tell me if, if this is correct, it's easier to defend somebody that's out than in. Do you feel that way? Not true. Not true? No. Is it easier on me because yeah, of the fact well, yeah, that they you don't have come to, go to, to the jail. office? Yeah, yeah. yeah but it, 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 the representation is the same. Right. Whether they're in jail or they're out. I'm going to give those two people the same representation. If I got to go to the jail and visit, I got to go to the jail and visit them. Right. Okay. 
And so maybe it's easier for you, but it's really not easier case. Well, it's not. That, yeah, it right. doesn't. It it doesn't affect their defense. Right. That's okay. Good. Whether they're in custody or out of custody, all it is is logistically easier, and there will be uh, more communication, most likely. Right. right? Um, and things like that. Cool. The one last thing I'll share with you is I was just kind of interesting. Um, most of the times when you're in jail, they give you a list of bail bondsmen. But what I realize now is they really should give a list of all lawyers. Because what happens is the jails are actually pushing people to the bail bondsmen because they give them a list saying, if you want to get out, here's a list of bail bondsmen. And they basically change up the bail bondsmen every month to circulate in general. But there really should be a list of lawyers that they give out. If you're in custody, that's who they should be calling as well. So I think it's a kind of like the jail for some reason. Somehow they're marketing the bail bondsmen when really they should be maybe educating a list of lawyers that they can call instead of the bail bondsmen. It's kind of an interesting concept. That is an interesting concept. Yeah. Because I know I used to have the list when people would come out, they would say, hey, oh, here's the list I got, but they never give a list of lawyers. So anyway, this was, this was great information in general. If anyone has a specific problem where someone gets arrested, of course, Ryan Helmick is available at the defense firm to help out in general. Also, as the Problem Solver Show, we do have the Problem Solver Vegas. There's also a QR code on your screen if you want to scan the QR code and you want any information, if you need any help, myself, the Problem Solver, and other Problem Solvers like Ryan Helmick is helping people um, every single day. Uh, that's our goal is to help people in the community. So again, I appreciate Ryan for coming on the show and sharing and educating uh, to the public with this great information um, so they can use it. You know, God forbid something happens in the future, they can use that information. Again, thanks, Danny, for co-hosting. And Beja, thanks so much. Thank you so thanks much. Thanks again, Ryan, as well. We'll see you next Tuesday at 6 p.m. on Cox Channel 14. Have a good week and stay safe. I always knew I wanted to be an attorney. I just like helping people. Are you okay? Do you need any help? Thanks, Christopher. I've been in Vegas helping the little guy since I was a little guy. Are we any good at helping you win? No, we're great. Call us now for help with your injury case.